Well, welcome to uh, our podcast today. And uh, this uh, very uh, afternoon, we have a special guest in our midst um, by the names of Pastor Lydia. Pastor Lydia, do you want to uh, talk about yourself briefly? <laughs> yeah, praise God. Amen. My name is Pastor Lydia. Mm -hmm. I'm from Switzerland, Lydia Berry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm from Switzerland, uh, yeah. from Trinity's Love Ministries. Yeah. And um, I'm blessed to be here. Amen. Thank well, you're welcome you. to London. How are you finding London? Is this your first time in London? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's my first time in London. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm loving London, mm -hmm. apart from the rain part. <laughs> oh, that's wel welcome to the British weather. So you, you, you came, you, you traveled alone? Or? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always travel with package. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm here with my husband. Yeah. And our two sons. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, Levin and Jamie. Yes. And uh, we are blessed to be with uh, Shiloh Tabernacle yeah. Ministries. Amen. Yeah, we were blessed to, to host you uh, last Sunday. It was uh, awesome. We had a very good time in the presence of the Lord. Yes. Uh, this month we are uh, specifically talking about um, faith, unshakable faith. Yes. Uh, what has been your journey of faith? Uh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, my life... Yeah, let's start from where, when when did you come to, to know the Lord and how, how has it been your, 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 your journey of faith so far? Well, I I think I I think I've known the Lord my whole life, uh -huh. <laughs> I should say. Awesome. Um I remember I think I was about five years old mm -hmm. when my mom took us to, to church, to Victory Church when she found the Lord. Yeah. And there I gave my life to Jesus. Amen. With my the rest of my family wow. and up to now, I've been on the way with Jesus. Amen. So there's nothing else I know wow. apart from Him. Wow. So how did you get to to live in Switzerland? <laughs> uh, you are a girl from uh, from Kampala. I yeah, can, I guess. Katwe. Katwe. <laughs> Katwe. Yes. All Katwe. the way from Katwe. Yes. Tell us about. <laughs> oh my God, this is awesome. My goodness, what a testimony. So yeah. a girl from Katwe, yeah. and she's now she, you are now Swiss. Yes, I'm now Swiss. How does that happen? <laughs> Um, I, I fell in love. <laughs> fell in love? Wow, yeah. awesome. <laughs> I mean, the Lord sent somebody uh, to Uganda, and um, the funny thing is, when he, he was coming to Uganda, he came purposely to seek God. That's Stefan, yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. my husband, mm -hmm. Stefan, mm -hmm. and I met him at my workplace. Mm -hmm. That's how we got to know each other. Yes. And, yeah, we started dating, and the next thing is, I moved here. We got married and it's uh, 12 years now. <laughs> wow, congratulations. Thank you. Wow. It's how, by God's grace. <laughs> how has been that journey? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we have faced a lot of challenges and uh, it's God's grace, to mm -hmm. be honest, unshakable faith mm -hmm. that we are still together and we are still, you know, uh, we are 13 years together Amen. and 12 Yes, being married yes. with two children, we thank God. It's Amen. God's grace. Amen. Yeah. So, when you uh, you you were married in Uganda or in uh, in Switzerland? Um, we were married in Uganda first. The introduction was in Uganda. We had yes. a traditional wedding, mm. and uh, three months later, we I traveled to Switzerland, and there we got married uh, officially mm. by law. Amen. Yes, civil wedding. Amen and amen. <laughs> so. That word faith, and Sheikha, you, you, you spoke about your relationship starting and the journey being the journey of faith. Yeah. Uh, what happened after you, you had just, uh, you know, about to get married? What happened in your lives? Well, two weeks before we got married, yeah. a lot of people don't know this, even my family members. Mm -hmm. um, my husband found out that he, he had cancer. What? Yeah. And that was two weeks before he traveled to Uganda to get married. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was a shock mm -hmm. to everybody. Mm -hmm. And we were young. Mm -hmm. He was 29 and mm -hmm. I was just 20. Mm -hmm. And we were just beginning, you know, studying our, <clears throat> our lives. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And um, so he was very, very terrified. I can imagine. But he actually asked me, he said, you're young. Mm -hmm. And I don't know my life right now. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to survive. Yeah. 
if I'm going to beat the cancer or yeah. if I'm going to die, but I wouldn't want to put you in a position where you marry somebody who mm. doesn't even know if he's going to live mm. the next month. Where are you when he's telling you all this? I was in Uganda planning the wedding. Yes, where about in Uganda? Were you in a car? Were you at home? What was going on in your life? Um, I was, uh, actually I was with my sister and my brother. We were going around shopping for the things of the introduction, uh -huh. the wedding. Yes. And he, he called me because he had told me a day before that he was feeling a little bit sick and not not fine. Yeah. And uh, he asked, I, so I told him, you know what, before you travel, mm. come, go to the doctor to get checked. Yeah. Because, you know, they are the doctors are different from yeah. the ones in Uganda. Absolutely. So he came, he mm. went to the doctor mm -hmm. and the doctor, so, you know, it, it looks suspicious. So mm. he sent him to a specialist, mm -hmm. oncologist, yes. to, to check him out. Yeah. And that's when they discovered that he has, uh, he had a tumor. What? Yeah. And uh, he told the doctors that I, he was getting married in two weeks. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So the doctors told him he was free to get go, travel, get married. Yeah. And if he comes back after two weeks, he was going to be operated. My goodness. And start chemotherapy right away. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's what happened. So my husband traveled, came to Uganda. We got married. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of people. You know, nobody knew. Before, Not, before you get married, I want to know what was going on in your mind when he told you, when he broke the news about, <laughs> you know, this, uh, 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 this, this dangerous disease, you know. What, what happened? What, what went on in your mind? I mean, first of all, we all broke down and cried. I mean, nobody receives a cancer diagnosis and you don't get terrified. Yeah, yeah. We cried. Mm. He was in Switzerland, I was in Uganda, and mm. my sister and my mm. brother, mm. we all broke down in the car and cried mm. because we couldn't believe it. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and so we right away started to pray. Yes. Because that's all I know. Yes. What to do. And I said we will go ahead with the wedding. Yes. Because... If Jesus is on your side, <laughs> that's what you said. Yeah, you go, you go ahead with the, with the wedding. Yeah, we go ahead with the wedding. Even when you have been told that this guy <laughs> is carrying cancer right now. Yeah, that he he wow. could die next month. Yeah, wow. Wow. because I knew there was no way mm -hmm. God would give me a husband mm -hmm. and not even give me a chance to enjoy life with Him together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. So I told him we are going to go ahead with the wedding. My God. You're coming to Uganda and we're going to believe God for a miracle. Jesus. You know, so he, he said, are you sure you still want to marry me? My God. And I said, yes. Because there was something, when I was growing up, mm -hmm. we didn't, you know, we didn't run away when situations got hard. Mm. When things got hard, we mm. didn't back away. You stood your ground. Yes, mm. my mother said, if you need anything, we mm. go to Jesus. Oh if there is a battle that is coming, you take your troubles to Jesus. Mm. You don't run away because things have gotten hot. Absolutely. And look for yourself a new husband, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Mm. And it wasn't because we had spent a lot of money in the preparations of the wedding, yeah. you no. Know? Mm. But I loved him genuinely, and he genuinely loved me. Amen. So I couldn't just run away yeah. because this guy is sick yeah. he was really sick mm, 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 mm. so i told him we're gonna pray and yes. we're gonna fight this and we're gonna win amen because jesus is on our side absolutely so he came he flew in mm -hmm. we got married uh -huh. and after two weeks he flew back to switzerland and they operated on him and he started chemotherapy what yeah oh my god this is awesome mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh-huh mm -hmm. then when so 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 uh, later on you joined him Yes, the other one, I, I, I flew to Switzerland and mm. we had the civil wedding. If you see our wedding photos in Switzerland, my husband doesn't have hair. Oh my God, so you, 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 you got married whilst he was uh, doing chemotherapy? Yeah, he had completed chemotherapy, uh -huh. but he was still recovering. Because, yes. you see, when you do chemotherapy, it's attacking your cells, your mm. immune system. Yes. So he was mm. very weak mm. a lot of times mm. and he was sleeping a lot and he mm. lost all the hair and mm. he, had a, he had a lot of nausea mm. because the, the, the medicine is very, very strong. Absolutely. So, yeah, we got married. Wow. But he didn't even have yet a clear bill from the doctors yes. that the cancer it's was gone. gone. Yeah. 
Mm. But we were praying mm. and we were fasting. My mm. family, they all stood, you know, for us. Mm. And my mom, mm. I remember when I told my mother that day my husband was operated after the wedding, mm -hmm. that that uh, Stephen was having cancer. Mm -hmm. And the first thing she said it was, uh, why didn't you tell me sooner? <laughs> we would have started already this war, yes, you know. Yes, yes. Wow, so what, what a woman, what yeah, a woman. She joined me and, you know, she started fasting mm. together with me yeah. and interceding on his behalf. Yes. And uh, three months after chemotherapy, mm. we got the news from the doctors. Uh -huh. They told him the cancer was gone. He was right. cancer free. God, hallelujah. What a testimony. <laughs> yes. Wow, that's awesome. That's a lesson for many of us, you know, uh, when the going gets uh, uh, tough, many people give up. But, uh, uh, you know... Like that old song, which used to, which used to go, when they're going, to, when they're going to get stuff, <laughs> the tough get going. Yeah. yeah, it's not a time of backing up, like the Bible says. Uh, it says, having done all, just stand. And I suppose that's what was going on in your mind. Do 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 you mind sharing uh, what kind, what type of cancer you know, uh, Stephen, uh, who was diagnosed with by then? Is that okay? Of course. Absolutely. So what was that? Uh, he had uh, testicle cancer. What? I mean, a lot of men are having um, this type of cancer. Mm. It's actually affecting a lot of people. Mm. Young people mm. and older men, mm. they get it mm. a lot, mm. Mm. you know. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, people don't talk about these things. Yeah. Because these are like intimate things. Yes. You know. Yes. It's like a lot of people also get breast cancer yes. and they get ashamed, ashamed to talk about, to it, talk yeah. about yeah. it, you know. But yeah. it's not your fault that you got testicle cancer Absolutely. or breast cancer or yeah. any kind of cancer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is just a disease. Mm. And and for me, I, I see cancer as a, as a demon. Mm. It is. That is killing a lot of people, Absolutely. young and, and old and innocent people. Yeah. And it's destroying a lot of families and lives. Yeah. I and can. I, I can't cancer, I really do. Mm, mm, mm. I had it with a passion too. Yeah, your situation is almost uh, similar to ours because uh, when we just got married, um, you know, shortly after that, uh, Pastor Joyce was diagnosed with uh, uterine cancer and um, she was told that she, she would she never have children because her uterus was uh, so, so, so heavy, it couldn't hold uh, a child. Uh, but we believed God as well. We used to go to um, uh, the crusades that were held by uh, uh, Apostle, late, late Apostle Barabi Okuma oh, uh, wow. at Clock Tower. I Every remember. evening. You, I think you, you, you must have attended those because they were just in your backyard there. Yeah, I grew up in those conferences. There you go. So we got our deliverance and healing there, you Thanks. know, after Pastor Robert Kayanja prayed for uh, Pastor Jesus. Amen. She got healed, Amen. and today we have got three three wonderful children out after that those, that report. Wow. So, so uh, I, I I want to suppose that um, uh, that you know that uh, although um, he was cleared of cancer, I think I want to um, to assume that it had an effect on on you guys later on. Of uh, course, yeah. I mean, they told us there was no way we could have children naturally, wow. and. Um, the only way we could have children, we had a 40% chance. Of, 40%? Of, yeah. And there is no guarantee. Mm. But we still believed God. Mm. You know, for me, I believe God blesses us uh, through medicine. Mm -hmm. It's still God who heals. Yeah, absolutely. And He can bless you through supernatural healing. Yes. He can bless you through so many ways. Yes. And um, so we had to do IVF. Wow. You know, wow. to have children. Wow. Wow. You know, we believed God. Yes. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> my children are a blessing. Mm. They're perfect. Mm. And they are children from God. Amen. I mean, they prophesied, so many people prophesied on us that we will have children and we'll have a family and we mm. believed God. Mm. You mm. know, mm. and today we have two children. My goodness. What? And uh, yeah. all of them through IVF? Yes. Through IVF. My God, what was your experience with IVF? Because IVF is not a guarantee. Many people have gone for it and uh, have come up, uh, you know, out uh, uh, empty-handed and after spending lots of money. So, how do, can you tell us a bit of uh, uh, your experience? You, you know. Well, mm. first of all, it's very expensive. Yeah. And it takes a lot of emotions mm. and. Ups and downs, yes, and everything. Yeah, I mean, you need to be committed. Yeah, 
and even if you're committed, there's no guarantee. Mm. Still, I, I, I don't see that it's um, because of the medicine or because of the, the doctors and the, all these things. Mm. I really say mm. it was God. It was God. Amen. Because children are a gift from God. Mm. They're a blessing. Mm. And I do believe mm. that, uh, that, that it was God. Yes. Still. Yes. I mean, I, I had to go through a lot of, you know, pain mm. and, and overstimulation and, mm. and the hormone, you know, challenges mm. and, and all these things. But mm. it was God who wow. carried us through this. Yes. Because, yeah, along the way we had two miscarriages mm. in one year. What? Yeah. My God. Actually, I was three times pregnant in one year. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my goodness. That must have had a toll on your... On your on your body, yeah. Mm. Yes, yes, it was. It mm. was very very hard. Mm. But there was something I, I I said. I was not going to go into a dark place. Mm. I refused. We did something. We turned to God. Unshakable in your faith. Yes. Yeah. We <laughs> turned to God mm. and we believed God, mm. even though we were going through very painful emotional mm. challenges. Yes. I mean. If you're watching me and you've been, you know, you want children mm -hmm. and you've done everything right mm -hmm. and you, you conceive mm. and you're excited for your miracle, mm. you spend money on it mm. and you lose it. Mm. There's something that hates you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. a lot of people get, uh, you know, emotional mm. breakdowns yeah. and all these things. Yeah. But we ran to God because a lot of people discouraged us. I can imagine. And they were like, you know, you should give this up. You should accept faith. faith. Yeah. But my God does not talk about faith. <laughs> Amen. And my God doesn't care mm. how many negatives the doctors have given you. Absolutely. Him. He doesn't care yeah. how many people have let you down. Absolutely. And yep. how many people have underlooked you and walked on you. Wow. My God says, I have promised you children. Yes. And I'll give children to you. Amen. Only if you don't give up on yourself. Yes. Because for me, I believe if God hasn't given up on me, mm -hmm. I'm still breathing. Mm -hmm. I'm still alive. Mm -hmm. He has given you provision yeah. to go and, you know, make your dreams come true. Absolutely. He has put you in a certain country Amen. and you are healthy and able to work. Mm. Go and work. Amen. You know, don't depend on someone mm. to bring a miracle on your doorstep mm. when you can go out there. Mm. When God says, I want I want to put a blessing in your life, but mm. where can I put it? Mm. And you have nowhere to, you know, where should I put your blessing? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> is it even in the Bible when the prophet told the woman, bring all the jerrycans mm. and buckets mm. and whatever mm. you have. Borrow, not a few. Borrow, mm. you know, I'm going to mm. anoint you, I'm going to bless you. Amen. If she had come up with just, you know, a few little things she had and got comfortable, yeah. the blessing wouldn't have flowed, Absolutely, you know. Yeah, yeah. So she brought everything she got, mm -hmm. and God stood on that and yes. blessed her. Amen. So my job, we did our part. Yes. We went to the doctors. Uh -huh. We got checked. Yeah. We, we did IVF, yeah. right? Yeah. And it was up to him to bless us. Absolutely. You had a promise that you have children yes. and you stood on the promise. Yes, he wow. did. Wow. He did. Wow. He promised that he would give us children, not just one child. Wow. But children. <laughs> so we stood on that. I remember mm -hmm. when I got the second miscarriage, I was so, I mean, you know, after you've done everything, yeah. I was sad. And, yeah. and I remember my husband said, look, honey, God promised us wow. children. Wow. We're not going to give up. Wow. Wow. You're still young. Wow. We're still young. We're going to go ahead. We're going to do this. Amen. He has promised Man and he faith. will fulfill. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You know, crazy faith. And he said, we're not going to give up just because people are telling us that mm -hmm. we are too old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm 32. <laughs> <laughs> You're still young. You know, mm -hmm. and he said, we're not going to back down. Yes. We're going to take the promise he said to, to us. Yes. And we are going to believe him. Yes. And he's going to bless us. Yes. And thank God we did, pers Amen. you know, persisted Amen. and went ahead. Yes. I mean, today we have Jamie. Stubborn faith. Wow. 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 <laughs> we have Jamie Rain. He's a miracle baby. Oh my God. What? You know, sometimes the devil knows that your miracle is ready to pop. Yes. And it's going to, to stir up the waters, mm. to scare you and threaten you mm. 
that you he will shake the boat mm -hmm. even though Jesus is sleeping is yeah. in the boat yes you're gonna panic absolutely he wants you to panic yeah. and start jumping into yeah. the water so yeah. that you can drown yeah. you know yeah but Jesus is in the, He's boat. in the boat. You need to know who's who's in the boat. Who is in your boat when, you know, when things when when the tempest is rising? Who is in your boat? Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. Mm. He knows Jesus is in the boat. Yes. And he wants you to forget that Jesus is in the oh boat. Oh my God. You know, oh just God. because Jesus was sleeping, it doesn't mean he wasn't oh, aware of the situation. Oh, oh. As a matter of fact, he was sleeping because he knew it was already done. The situation couldn't, uh, didn't, couldn't uh, do anything uh, to, to, to them. So exactly. that's why he rested. Uh -huh. Exactly. Wow. So he tried to stir up, you know, things and people mm -hmm. and, and threaten mm -hmm. and try to shake us. Yeah. You know, the people who were supposed to comfort us, <laughs> to be close to us. Yes. They all abandoned us. They oh. all discouraged us. You wow. know, you should stop this. You're wasting wow. your money. Wow. You already have one child. Why wow. don't you let you know wow. fate decide for you? Wow, wow. You hear that? That means that we cannot depend on people. No. Because people will leave you. God alone is the one that cannot leave you. That's what he says in, in Isaiah 43. Though you walk, though you were in the waters, the rivers and the I'll fires, I will you. never leave you. Wow. No, thank you. So people, your friends, just, you know, they said you're crazy. I think they thought you were crazy. No, the family, yes. Yeah. They thought we are crazy. And they thought, you know, you live in a fantasy. Mm -hmm. But you know, one thing I love about God is he mm -hmm. loves us to live in fantasy. Absolutely. Because when you live in a fantasy with God, mm -hmm. things are able. Mm -hmm. Things are different. Amen. You can walk on water. Yes. Even though everything <laughs> around you is saying, mm -hmm. no, you cannot do that. Mm. When God is in the boat, yes. you can rest and put your feet up. Amen. Even though you don't have rain. Amen. You know, when God is in the boat, yes. you don't have to prove a point no, to nobody. No, no. Because he will stand up and just say, calm down now. And the sea just Hallelujah. came down. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. After mm -hmm. spending thousands and thousands of pounds. So you got uh, uh, Levin. Levin comes? Yes, Levin 